This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, nearly there, but a bit more. The next one is something that certainly could be asked and has been there several times. Uh, and isn't something that actually needs a formula. I think once you see it, it's obvious. I can't really write it as a formula. But you'll see in um, ex exam paragraph 5... Sorry, would, hello? I'm leaving out example 7. Do it if you want, but that's more like a little game. But it says combining investments. And to show you what I mean, look at the example... Mattis decides to invest his money as follows. He's going to put 20% of his money in A, which is a beta of 1.2. He's going to put 40% of his money in B, which is a beta of 1.8. 30% in C, which has the same risk as the market. And 10% in government securities. So, I think you'd all agree, if you put your money in investments with different levels of risk, if you like your overall risk, is somewhere in between, yeah? Hello? Equally, equally obviously, I hope, each of those investments will be giving different returns. You know, if it's high beta, you're getting a high return, a low beta, a low return. Well, I think you'd agree, if you put your money in investments giving different returns, your overall return will be the average. True? It says here, well, two things, so I don't care the order. Uh, what we really want to know is what overall return will he be getting? Well, there are two ways you can do it, and I must show you both. I'm not just going to quote you a rule. I think the most obvious way of working out his overall return, if we could work out how much return each one's giving and take an average. Sensible? So, let's work out. What returns are we getting from each? A, A has a beta of 1.2. So it'll be giving risk-free of 8 plus 1.2 times, market's 20, risk-free 8. A will be giving a return of... Will you all check me, please? 22.4. <coughs> what return would B be giving? Well, again, risk-free 8... But its beta is 1.8, so 1.8 times the market premium. I think it's 29.6. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, C, well C has the same risk as the market. So what return will C be giving? Yeah, if it's the same risk as the market, surely it'll give the same return as the market. All of us? <laughs> yeah? And finally, some of his money's in government securities. What return will government securities be giving? Yeah. You assume they're risk-free, and since the risk-free rate is 8, government securities will be giving 8. Well, OK, he's put his money a bit in each. Surely the overall return will be like a weighted average. 0.2 of his money is in A, 0.4 in B, 0.3 in C, 0.1 in the government... Can you check me?
You have to keep checking me. I'm not perfect. Nearly, but... Is that right? Yeah? And that's fine. And if that's all they asked, I mean, I don't care how you do it, that's quick enough, there's the answer. Overall, he'll be getting a return of 23.12. However, although that's right and that would get full marks, there is an alternative. It is a fact, and this, if you like, proves it. That if you mix together investments with different betas, different risks, the overall beta or risk will be the weighted average of the individual ones. What I mean is this. Let's do it again looking at betas. The beta of A, it tells us, is 1.2. The beta of B is 1.8. What's the beta of C, please? C has the same risk as the market. One. It's one times as risky. Its beta is one. And what's the beta of government securities, please? Zero. Zero. Zero risk-free, zero times the risk of the market. So there are the individual betas. Well, the overall beta will be the weighted average. So again, we've got 20% or 0.2 in A, 40% in B, 30% in C, 10% in the government. The weighted average is what? I think I get 1.26. Oh, no. Yes. I think the yes is a winning. Do you agree, Natalia? Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to know the overall return. Well, if I know the overall risk... Sorry, you're all right there? Yeah, yeah. If I know the overall risk, then I can use the ordinary beta formula. The overall return... The risk-free rate, which was 8, plus beta 1.26 times the market's premium... The overall return Save me winding back. Can you look back? Is it the same as before? Twenty three point one two? All right. Now then listen to me carefully, please. Um there are two ways to give the same answer. Uh here, if all I've said is what's the overall return? It doesn't matter which way you do it. I don't think there's much difference in the time, you know. It's entirely your choice. And you'll get full marks. Hello? But this is the one... I say I can't write this as a formula. But this is the one, in a sense, I have proved. I've written down there, you can read yourself. But it is a fact. If you invest in companies with different betas, the overall beta will be the weighted average. Okay? Well, as I say, Redder, here it wouldn't matter how you'd done it. You didn't need to do that. But you could actually need it. What has been asked several times, I'm afraid just as part of a question, is this. Can you find somewhere to squeeze in? It's very short. But suppose I tell you, our company... Currently, has a beta of 1.2. So, I don't know, maybe at the moment we're a telephone company, the risk of telephones is 1.2. Okay? 
We're going to do a new project, or we're considering a new project. Well, would you all agree that if this project is more risky, then the company as a whole becomes a bit more risky? If the, company, uh, yes, if, the, if the project is less risky, the company as a whole becomes a bit less risky. Would you agree? Well, we're considering a new project. We have calculated... You may wonder how, but it's happened. We have calculated that the beta of the whole company... Uh, will change to 1.3. Well, the answer should be obvious, but tell me, does this mean the new project is more risky or less risky than we currently are? It's more risky. You add on a more risky project, the overall risk of the company goes up. Finally, though, the new project will be, let's say, 40% of the total company. So be clear what I'm saying. If we take this project... 60% of the company's money is in the existing company, if you like. 40% will be in the new project. What I want to know is what is the beta of the new project. All right? Now, it's, it's the, what we just did before backwards again. But here we know the answer. We know the new beta. What must the beta of the project have been? Alright, I wonder if anybody's got an answer, but let's check. Check with me. Uh, again, I hope you see what I mean. It's a work backwards of what we did. You don't need to set it up like that. But we're, um, our existing beta is 1.2. But in future, 60% of our money is in the existing. But 40% of our money will be in the new project. We don't know the beta. However, if you're mixing between two things with different betas, the overall beta will be the weighted average. Last time, we knew these, we took the average and got the answer. Here, we know the answer, the overall beta will be 1.3. You're filling in the missing figure. True? And so again, I didn't need to write it up like that, but I hope it's clear to everybody. But 1.2 times 0.6 is 0.72. So the missing figure here must be what? Uh, 8... Is it 0.58? And therefore x, the beta I'm after, must be 0.58 divided by 0.4. You should have got an answer of 1.45. Okay? So on its own, I think you'd agree it's not hard, and it? The trouble is, you'll see later, uh, very shortly, you are going to need the beta of a project if we're doing any appraising. 
Sometimes he gives it you, but several times he's done that. On its own, easy. It's only been two or three marks, but part of a much bigger question, you know. But obviously I can only do one bit at a time. Uh, but there's a place where you do need to know uh, that last rule. Again, it's not on the formula sheet, but I think that's actually an easy rule if you like to remember. And it's the only one I've actually proved to you that it, it does work. Okay? All right. Nearly there, but still more.